Did you know if you're providing liquidity on a DEX like Uniswap, you could secretly be losing a lot of money and you may not realize it. The last video I made, I kind of explained what happened when I provided liquidity on Uniswap V3. I got some comments and some people were like, hey, what if you were using a liquidity optimizer, um, something like Arrakis Finance, in order to manage your liquidity position? Now, sure, that would help a little bit, but it's not always the case. Here's a pretty cool article you guys can read. I'll leave a link in the description below. And I'm also going to give some examples, personal examples that I've used with liquidity management services. Yes, I threw in a couple thousand dollars into them so you guys can see how it works. Providing liquidity is one of those things like, hey, it seems like you can make a bunch of money, but if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. But just looking into the stats and into the article right here, in most pools, and permanent loss is bigger than the rewards that the pool can generate from fees. On average, and permanent loss is 130% of the fees the pools earn, which basically means you are going to be losing money, more money that you would have gotten opportunity-wise or actual losses from impermanent loss than you would earn in fees. Now, there are some things that can combat this, but it's not a foolproof mechanism. And I'll show you later in this video and I'll give you actual examples why it's not foolproof. The first is rebalancing. People are like, hey, you can use Arrakis Finance or you can use Gamma. You can use all these different protocols that will manage your position for you. And they will do it 24 seven. However, this isn't the case. As you can see here, 70% or more lose more in that LP position than if they would have simply just held the position in their hand. I have proof actually showing this as well. Now, of course, there are profitable Uni V3 liquidity providers, but they're very few and far between. I'm just trying to show you guys what the data says. You have to look at everything data wise. Now they even go on to say the most promising solution is choosing the right pool to invest in. And I agree with them. If you are going to choose a pool like some ETH and I don't know, some random meme coin, just consider it going to zero because that meme coin is probably going to go to zero and it's going to take all of your ETH and sell it into this meme coin. Now, if you're doing something like an ETH and USDC, uh, understand that long term ETH is going to outperform that stable coin, even though there may be some volatility here and there. But if your strategy is just to build a larger bag and profit and take advantage of the volatility that is happening with uh, ETH and USDC for a short time frame, you can do that and profit from that. And you can even use the impermanent loss to your advantage. I'll give you guys that later in this video, but let's go and get into the example without explaining all this jazz. So here's the first example that I have. And yes, I have screenshots to prove that I did all this, um, but this was actually on Popsicle Finance. When this pool first launched, this was Grail and ETH when Popsicle went live. This APR was like, I don't know, it was like 2000% or like 1800%. Let me see. Yeah, here it is. It was a 2800% APR. This is because the token was just trading like it was so volatile. Uh, there wasn't a lot of liquidity into the pool, but there was a ton of trading volume. As you can see here, the prices I got in on Ga Grail, I simply just deposited one ETH in 932 ARB. So the total investment I had in there was $2,951. How do I get this value? Well, I simply did one ETH times the 1767 price, which gave 1767. And then I did 932 ARB times $1.27 to give me $1,184, which equaled out to $2,951. If I would have simply hold it or held it, Pat, for the four day time frame that I was in there, it was actually about five days, I would have had $2,964. So if I simply held my one ETH and my 932 ARB, I would have had $2,964. And here is the screenshot to show those deposits so you guys can see. I deposited here one ETH here and 932 ARB here to get some of these PLP tokens, which is the zap in for Grail. So you can use other tokens so you can use whatever you want. At the end, after I withdrew and I had this amazing 2,800% APR, 
I was left with 0.4 Grail and 0.8826 ETH. The prices, 29.85 and 18.09 respectively. 11.97 for the total on Grail and 15.97 for ETH. My total is $2,794. Whoa, 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 whoa. What about the 2,800% APR? I should have more money than I initially invested. I invested $2,951. Now I have $2,794. Don't understand what happened. Well, grail price at the time from the initial investment was $3,327. After it went down to about $2,900. What can we take from this? First is impermanent loss killed me on this. It didn't kill me, it was like 100 bucks. But still, something to keep in mind. Just because I had this carrot of 2,800% APR didn't mean that's what I was going to get. Second, sometimes the best thing to do is nothing. If I would have did nothing and sat on my hands, I would have increased my bag by $13. So I would have had $13 more if I would have just sat there and held. But instead, I had to say, hey, I need to do something and feel like I'm doing something to make a difference. So I'm gonna deposit into this pool. It's got 2,800%. No, sometimes the best thing to do is nothing. So I had a loss because I had to do something. So I thought I'm going to deposit in this pool to do something. And I did and it was a loss, whatever. Third is just because you deposit into one of these auto compounders, like they auto rebalance in like, hey, if ETH goes out of range, yada, yada, yada. You can see here, these are the ranges right here. Upper tick is 11,000. Lower tick is... Uh, ne negative 5,600, geez, man, that's so low. But just because you have these different ticks and ranges that are constantly rebalanced, how do you think you gotta rebalance? Well, one, you gotta pay gas fees to do this. Those gas fees are taken out of your total. So if it's extremely volatile and this concentrated lane range is constantly having to rebalance, you're going to pay those fees. Second, a portion of these fees actually go to the protocols. So the ice stakers are actually getting some of your revenue. So you're giving away some of the fees, the minuscule fees that you're already earning. If you remember in this article, most of the liquidity providers are actually receiving 130% IL over the fees from the pool that they earn. So they're actually getting 30% more in permanent loss than the actual fees they earn. So if they earn $100 in fees, they're actually seeing $130 in permanent loss. And from the previous video I made on it, it, it actually averages just about right. In fact, mine was actually a little more than that uh, because I also picked some other pairs. So again, the third thing you need to keep in mind is the protocol fees as well as the gas fees. That's just more money that's being drained away. Now, let's go and give you another example. This is the ARB token. And these fees were also nuts in him. And at the time they were a 1200% APR, um, but there wasn't any bonus incentive on this. You can see here, let me get rid of this so there's not enough distractions. You can see here, I first got in on 325 with 1200 ARB. And then I also made the withdrawal of my tokens to get 1019 and 0.11 ETH. And this was over a like, 17, 18 day time frame. Let's just call it half a month for why not sakes. Uh, let's delete these because these are not fridge pictures. So you can see here the popsicle for Arbitrum, my token, 1200, because remember I first deposited 1200 ARB tokens. The price was $1.27. Total investment, $1,524. The ETH price at this time was $17.55. I'm just throwing it out there for ETH terms because it was ETH and ARB. So when I deposited automatically in the pool, it sold a little portion into the ETH. After rebalances, after the 11 days in the 1200% APR, I am now left with $1,463. Bro, I deposited 1524. Why do I have 1463 after that much APR? Almost after a month too, what the snap? Shouldn't I be more? Well, no, not the case. Why? In permanent loss, rebalancing, protocol fees, gas fees. It doesn't work like that, bro. So I withdrew, I got 1,019 ARB tokens and I got 0.1189 ETH. ETH went up in price and went to $1,914. ARB went down three cents, 
to a dollar twenty-four. My total twelve thirty-six for R plus two twenty-seven. This all includes the fees, swap fees, and everything. I left with a loss. If I simply would have just held the tokens, not even provided liquidity, just held the ARB, not even got exposure to ETH, I would be sitting on $1,488. I would have only lost like 30 bucks. But instead, I felt I had to do something. I had to deposit. I lost $60 instead, thinking, oh, I got the 1,200% APR. Point is, is impermanent loss killed me. If you don't think that's enough, let's give a third example. This one actually was not as bad. This one worked out. Why? Because it had incentives on top of the tokens. This was for Arrakis Finance. Man, I said that weird. So Arrakis, here's some screenshots. Here's some screenshotage. Uh, this, I was in there about 140 days. It was not that bad. My initial deposit, I deposited about one ETH and 7,500 Lyra. My withdrawal was about 1,100, yeah, 1,159 11, Lyra and 0.79 ETH. So a little bit of IL. I lost some ETH, whatever. I'm going to delete that nasty screenshot. And then I also added in the incentives I got. I got a total of 4,500 Lyra tokens, which is about $500 at an 11 cent price. So if we multiply this, the token, we first deposited 7,540 Lyra tokens and 0.995 ETH. If you multiply these prices, 0.18 and 1618, the total is 1357 for Lyra and 1609 for ETH. So a total investment of around $2,996. If I would have simply held these, yeah, they would have went down. They would have went down to $2,384. Now, after the impermanent loss and the investment, I have 11,159 Lyra tokens and 0 0.7921 ETH tokens. So 1339 and 1237 respectively. So I would have been left with 2,576. This all includes all of those swap fees. Now keep in mind when I deposited into your ETH was, uh, and the prices were about the same and the Lyra token, it did go down in price. But over a year, it actually sustained and helped a bit, and I left with $2,576. Add in the incentives, and I ended with a total of $3,076. So that was a increase of $80 from the initial investment, compared to the total value of 2384 But let's say we get rid of the incentives and just go with the good volume and it also didn't have extreme and permanent loss because ETH didn't moon and it also didn't nuke super bad. And Lyra, it went down a bit, but it didn't giga nuke. It was only down around 30%. I actually was in the green. I made about 120 bucks on this. Now, does this mean that Arrakis or using a liquidity management is the go-to service? Actually, it doesn't mean that at all. Why? Because we showed you the example with Arbitrum, we showed you the example with Grail, and we even showed you this example that we were only in the green about $120. This one had a lot of volume, but the reason why I was able to make out good, because if you saw my initial investment, I still was at a loss from the initial. The reason why I made out okay is because the incentives on top of that. So the whole point of all these examples that I gave to you guys is just because you see an APR and see a yield doesn't mean that's the yield you're going to get. You want to look for one, pairs that have liquidity incentives, two, that aren't likely to see a ton of impermanent loss, three, you want to want, have ones that have a high amount of volume. An ETH and USDC pair shooting for around 30 to, uh, yeah, 30 to 25% APR is reasonable. But if you're looking to get something that's around 1,200, 1,300%, well, you're going to be rudely awakened. It's, it's not going to give you that much, and you're going to receive a ton of impermanent loss. Anyways, guys, if you guys want to check out some of the previous videos I made on how to provide liquidity, how to use some of these different farms, as well as some other DeFi strategies and other projects I'm looking at, you guys can check out some of the previous videos. And yes, there is some airdrop content 
And if you guys want to join the premium Discord, there is a link in the description below. Let's hit you guys with a wisdom one-liner. We're in Proverbs chapter 10, verses 9. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. Be good, be righteous, and always hold true to your word. Peace. All right, guys. Sorry, I almost forgot. This is how you can use impermanent loss to your advantage. This is on Uniswap. Let's say, for example, I want to set a quote-unquote limit order at a certain price on ETH. So what I would do is I would say, hey, I'm going to pair up ETH and USDC. Uh, this is also going to allow me to get paid to buy the dip. So I'm just going to say ETH USDC, and we'll just call it, I don't know, 1%, because why not? Who cares? We're just literally buying the dip. We don't really care too much about volatility. We're going to look for the USDC per ETH to be 1500 and we want to buy around 1500 to $1,600. Well, it's actually just going to call it 1498 and 1590 Obviously, it's not in this price range right now. So instead, this is going to have me deposit 100% USDC. So if I want to do, I don't know, 10000 bucks, I want to invest at that price range between 1498 and 1590 the price of ETH just needs to go below the 1498 to be 100% in the ETH. So just for this example's terms, we're just gonna call it 1500. Well, it's gonna to go to 1498 again because it's just gonna be goofy. Uh, so here, just for this example's term, you can see here we're at 1498.2 and 1498.5. or 1528.5. So that's the smallest range that we can do. Basically what we're doing with this example is that we're setting the price range that we're going to LP for, but we're depositing 100% USDC because currently the price is $1,915 on ETH. So I'm gonna deposit 10,000 in USDC. After it goes below this level, this will all be turned into ETH because now it's out of range. So say ETH is trading at $1,300 now, I would have made my whole buy-in around $1,498. So I technically bought the dip and the swaps that were made between the 1498 and 1528, if there was, let's say, a million dollars in volume, which is highly unlikely, you would have gotten those swap fees as well. So you got the, you bought the dip and you got paid to do it. Now, the opposite is true. You can also use this to sell on the rips. So ETH, $1,900, we're gonna call it, we're gonna sell at a minimum price of 2000 and we're gonna call this, I don't know, uh, 1982 and 2000. So our limit price is going to be at this range. Well, 1982 and 2022. This is going to ask for 100% ETH. So all the ETH I deposit in here is going to be ready to be sold and I'm going to get paid to sell the rip because if ETH goes above $2,022, my position in this LP pool is going to be 100% USDC. So I effectively has sold my ETH into USDC. And then again, if there was a million dollars in trading volume between this range, I would have gotten paid in order to sell the RIP. So this is how you can take advantage of Uniswap V3 concentrated liquidity technology by buying the dips and selling the RIPs and getting paid to do it.